All right, so now where, where, the, where the interesting conversations come up with the Falcons, George, is they do have two very talented athletes on their team. We know this for sure. They may not have a great quarterback. They may not have a great running back. We don't really know what Patterson's future will be on the team. But we do know that they spent a first-round draft pick and a very high pick on Drake London. And naturally, everyone wants to throw Drake London and, and everybody else, and they want to throw a Debo Samuel on them, which is unfair. And, you know, and, 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 I'm, and it just kind of feels to me, George, I don't know, you tell me, it feels like the Falcons are collecting pieces. But I just don't know that how they're all going to make them fit. And that's when you do when you're only going to go 3-14 and 14 over the course of the season. You don't worry about that now. You just get the players that you feel eventually will be the pieces to the puzzle. And then in a couple of years, you put it together. That's how I feel about Drake London. Because it's like you have Patterson, you have London, and we'll talk about Pitts. And they really don't have somebody to get him the ball, honestly, at this point. So in two years from now, I'm going to be really interested in London. I just, I just don't know how he fits right now onto this team. Oh, I think I 100% agree with you. All right, he's somebody I'm probably not taking in drafts, uh, not in uh, standard drafts. You're playing in a keeper league, a dynasty league, something like that. I have a right. little bit more interest here. All right, so fine. But for the most part, in a redraft league, a one-year league, what are we hoping for here? All right, I think the man is immensely talented. So I think he could do some damage at times, but a couple of things here. Generally, rookie wide receivers take a little bit of time to develop, all right? You got to learn the entire route tree. You got to have chemistry with the quarterback. You got to know what to be the hot read guy, all right? And all that other stuff that comes along with it. Uh, it's not easy. It's not an easy position to learn in the NFL. Uh, and then we, that's before we get to the quarterback. You know, I don't know if Mariota can get him the ball on any kind of consistent basis. You know, I don't know if Mariota, if he's going to be his number one target all the time. I don't know that. I think that'll be Pitts, actually, uh, for the most part. So I think that's a problem. Plus, I don't think Mariota plays the entire season. All right, so what happens when they go to Ritter? Now you got a rookie quarterback who's not even a top, uh, you know, first round quarterback who's going to have any development time. Can he get the ball? Can he make the right reads? So many question marks here. So to me, to have this guy be, uh, you know, a, a wide receiver three to be in your starting lineup means all these questions have to be uh, answered in the affirmative. No, no. To me, like I said, he's a bench guy. You want to draft this year on your bench? Ah, see what happens. I'm okay with that. I think there are plenty of guys we do that. You draft, put them on the bench, you know, throw, throw mud against the wall, see if it sticks. But if someone's drafting them to be in your starting lineup here, I wish you good luck. And that's listen, in my in a league that I'm in, if someone's drafting them in the first 10 rounds, thank you. In my mind, that takes the playoff list I wasn't going to take anyway. And I'll find somebody I do want to start for me. So uh, I won't be touching him. Like I said, in regular one-year leagues, I'm not touching him. I do have interest in a, uh, once again, a keeper league uh, or a dynasty league. But even that, it's somewhat limited because I don't know who the quarterback's going to be. If you ain't got a quarterback and they don't, you ain't going nowhere. 